What's going on, everyone? Welcome to week five of the UPBA, where we are going up against Just Lucas and his Hellblaze Volcronas. As I mentioned yesterday, this weekend's battles are going to be post commentary because I did not have the capacity to live com them in the moment. Um, but unlike last week's battle, I actually played this battle in Finland uh, the day before I left uh, using Elias's setup. Um, so it is going to be played from Vepsis's uh, perspective. So, or like like his account, I guess, if you want to put it that way. But uh, it, this is a really fun game. I hope you all enjoy it. Um, and I'm very excited to show it off. Um, but Lucas is a great friend. I think we've only played once before, but it wasn't in a upload required setting. So make sure you go check out his channel. Um, we did play this battle and call. Uh, so you can hear us banter a little bit if you go watch his perspective as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we're going to see what he ends up bringing here. Um, he does have Rain and Dracovish, which is terrifying for my team because my bulky water is a wishy-washy. So I have to rely on my fat dragons to kind of do some stuff for me. That's why we have a Rocky Helmet Guzzler down there. Then Scarf Diggersby looks great once, um... That Pelper is uh, done with, and even if I can KO Zamazenta, uh, Body Slam looks wonderful too. Uh, we also have a Meteor Beam Celesteela, or not Meteor Beam, sorry, a Weakness Policy Celesteela, my apologies, um, because we've been slacking on offensive Steela sets as of late, so hey, let's bring that shit back, right? <laughs> um, but he is going to lead off with his Raikou, I'm going to lead off my Terrakion. This is a very interesting Terrakion set. Um, it's supportive. It's entirely supportive. You're about to see these four moves right here. Sacred Sword, Rocks, Reflect, Taunt. He could stay in and Scald me, but he has to fear this being potentially Scarf, just taking the hit and clicking Earthquake and KOing the Raikou. It's not necessarily a safe stay in for him. He could risk it and do it, but he doesn't. So this is going to be free Rocks for us, and this is basically how I wanted this set to work out when I crafted it. He would go into a sort of bulkier Mon. And then I'd have something like Taunt, so I'm able to Taunt him, I can prevent him from clicking Glare or Stealth Rocks. Um, if he goes for a Raw Earthquake, I am Focus Sash, so I should live the hit, but he actually goes for Glare. So I'm put in a situation now where I could Reflect, but I kind of want to preserve my Sash on this, and I know since it's Taunted now, it literally can't do anything to Celesteela. So this seems like a pretty good thing to bring in right now. I know it's like a Weakness Policy set that I would want to like use late game, but I'm also thinking that I could use it as a breaker because I have it as such a safe switch in at this point. And I don't think he's going to burn my weakness policy this early, so I could even, you know, make one hit and then come back in against something else later and try and pop the weakness policy there, such as, I don't know, Incineroar and Rain or something. Um, but I am put in a situation here where I can either swap out, but I don't have a lot of good switches, so I think I'm just going to go for damage, scout out whether this thing is offensive defensive and I got really lucky here I got a crit flinch um which is not very good for him um I was surprised he stayed in because I could have been meteor beam and I feel like he wants his rain um and if he loses this then digger speech just clicks a move but um he stayed in which is good on him but then I got rewarded so I just uh air slash again it's gonna do very little to this Raikou um on the swap in I could stay in and say hey you know, maybe I take an electric move and, and can pop my weakness policy, but I don't know if this thing's specs, I don't know if this thing's thunder, a um, lot of possibilities on it, so I don't want to risk it just yet, I know this thing can break uh, more mid-game anyway, so I'm just going to go into my Giratina, I don't think he's going to click Shadow Ball here, um, and he clicks Scald, which I also wasn't expecting, I was expecting more like a Volt Switch or a Thunder, so um, I get pretty lucky again, not by getting burned um, on this turn, that would have been kind of annoying. Um, but obviously I see that it's not choiced as he goes for Volt Switch here, so I don't know what I think this is. I know it's not Boots because he took Spikes damage. It could be Shuka. That's kind of what's going through my mind, so yeah. Uh, he didn't bring Snorlax, so this is his dedicated uh, Giratina answer, and Jesus Christ, that shit still does like a third. So I could actually stay in and just like KO this thing. Like I would go for a Dragon Claw, and then he would go for Knock Off and not kill me, and then I would kill with another Dragon Claw, but... I don't think I want to lose health on my Giratina that uh, quickly, necessarily. Um, so, I mean, I do think about it, but I think it is safer overall for me to just go into my Terrakion to just kind of resist the dual stab. As much as the Sash is cool, I kind of do like the ability to just 
come in on either thing, but I was not expecting the will o -Wisp, so that was really good prep on his part, and basically neutralizes my one attacking move I have on this thing. So I'm going to click uh, Reflect or Taunt here is what I'm deciding between, but I actually go with Taunt because I feel like the Sandaconda would come back in, um, and I want to make sure I'm preventing it from clicking Glare or uh, rocks. Rocks are the main thing that I'm very scared of. So um, I am able to taunt it. And then what I'm able to do on this turn um, is go for a pretty free reflect. Either he stays in and he does about half to me and then I can go into Celesteela right afterwards or he just switches out because he's afraid of me doubling into Celesteela in the first place. Um, but he just stays in, uh, which is totally fine and uh, goes for an earthquake. Um, and I can basically rinse and repeat at this point. Um, I can go into Celesteela if I want to. I could go into something else and try and switch it up in case he tries to call a double. And uh, that's kind of the thing I think about more because I'm thinking about, okay, if he goes in a Raikou on my uh, on my uh, Celesteela, that'd be pretty bad. So I go into Giratina instead and uh, he does swap out uh, like I called uh, and goes into this thing instead though. I thought it would be the Raikou, but it ends up being this thing, uh, which is actually probably his best case scenario um, but he doesn't know it yet, because he doesn't know if I'm Will-O-Wisp or something like that. So I don't know if he can restrain in, but I definitely don't want to stay in either in case he crunches. So do I think he's going to close combat? No. So I kind of just want to go into the Guzzlord and just get some helmet chip off is kind of where my mind is at. But he makes another great switch into Sandaconda, which unfortunately, while it will give me chip against this thing this turn, because I can just click an attack, um, he is going to get free rocks up which is kind of what I wanted to prevent. Um, so <laughs> that's not fun. We're gonna have to play with rocks up on our side. Um, hazards have been a little weird for me this season. I know I'm doing well this season, but in terms of hazard control, I feel like my team doesn't have a huge ability to deal with it one way or another. I can set up rocks and make suicide sets like this dumb Terrakion set, but I'm not sure if that's necessarily what I want to be doing. I don't think I ever mentioned this, but I did pick up Carpink as a as the third rocker, so who knows if that's going to be good. But he does go for rest here. Um, I'm between a few different things. I could just go into Celesteela, but I also just want to taunt here. Um, he isn't sleep talk, uh, so that's cool. I'm actually reflect here, because uh, I guess I might as well. Um, but I don't think he's sleep talk because he's glare, rocks, earthquake, rust. So he's not sleep talk, and that's pretty good information. So yeah, that makes sense why I reflect here. I don't have the taunt because I'm not afraid of sleep talk. Um, and then here, I'm just going to let this thing go down. Letting this thing roost would be really bad. So just kind of getting a suicide taunt off before I go down would uh, be pretty good. I think it's pretty obvious he's going to go for his gold, but I just can't risk it. So um, that is kind of where I'm at. <laughs> um, also, this thing revealed boots, so it's not damp rock, which is really nice. Um, as much as I would love for it to die to rocks, at least we know that rain won't be up forever. Um, but now we can go into this thing. Now I think is my prime opportunity to start breaking. Um, not necessarily because everything's in range of anything, but because I think it's going to put a lot of like damage onto his team. And he doesn't know if I'm like what my three moves are. So he could go into Incineroar, but he's risking me not being Meteor Beam. He could go into Raikou, but... Uh, he could be risking me being an Earthquake, which I am. He can go into Zamazenta, but he doesn't know if I'm, you know, Flamethrower or not. So there's always going to be a little bit of a mind game when going up against Offensive Celesteela that a lot of people have to deal with, whether it's Policy or Power Herb, whether it's um, some other strange set, you know, there's, there's always a ton of things that it could be. Um, this is a weird interaction because if he uh, woke up on that turn, or, or rather shed skinned earlier and then got the glare off, I would have had to autonomize again. But we already know those four moves on uh, Sandicon and we know it's only way to touch me is glare. So I think I just would have autonomized a second time and uh, I think I still would have outsped everything. I may have had to do it one more time because I don't know, remember how the uh, stat boosts in speed interact with the paralysis. I think it's not exactly uh, minus two paralysis. I think it cuts it in half no matter what. So anyway, just that's weird things. Um, but he goes into this thing um, and he's going to go for protect. Interesting play. Um, and he's going to see my flamethrower, uh, which is spooky. Um, but nonetheless, I'm just going to go for it. Like I would absolutely love this thing to be broken. So 
Um, even if I'm not going to kill it with flamethrower, and that just shows how amazing of a beast this is, because I am plus one and modest, and I didn't kill with a flamethrower. Um, yeah, that being said, still, like, I, damage on this is amazing, especially when it's going to get chipped by rocks. This frees up Giratina a lot more, because it makes Dragon Claw into Shadow Sneak very potent. And then he's going to go into this thing, and he's just really going to hope that I'm not Meteor Beam at this point. Because uh, I think that if I was Meteor Beam, I actually probably just won. So <laughs> um, that would be bad for him. But lucky for him, I'm not Meteor Beam. And uh, I'm just going to get damage on this. Again, this is something that I would love to have chipped uh, for Giratina to do Giratina things. You know, uh, this gets in range of Dragon Claw, gets it in range of virtually everything. I mean, you're going to see right here, it lives on about, what, 10%. So, and after Flare Blitz, it's going to be even less. So. Uh, he, he probably just has to let this go down, um, but now the question is, what do I send in? What has the hardest time revenging me? I think the answer to that is is, is just my S tier. I'm going to go into Giratina and uh, just click Dragon Claw, because uh, the only resist is Zamazenta, and after Rock's Chip um, and the damage room Dragon Claw, I would be stunned if Shadow Sneak did not KO. So uh, that's going to be the mod that I go into here. I do take a little while to think about it, because I'm thinking about Maybe I want to do Diggersby, um, or maybe I want to use this as an opportunity to set up with Clef, but um, ultimately I'm, I'm pretty confident just keeping up offensive pressure with uh, my S tier and just clicking Dragon Claw. Um, so yeah. And while, um, you know, uh, he's up in bonds, although I guess we're tied now 4-4, four, four, um, I, I do feel pretty good with my, my stuff in back. Most of my stuff's at full health, whereas, you know, the Pelipper's low, the Zamazenta's low, and I have rocks up uh, on my side. I guess he has rocks up on my side too. Um, but I put rocks up on his side too. Um, but it's more so that like the mons that are low on his side of things are going to get even lower. Um, I'm trying to remember what the fourth. Oh, Raikou. Yeah, Raikou's like at half or like 60% or something. So in terms of HP, I'm way ahead. Um, so I'm just going to Dragon Clock here on this Pelipper. He's clearly trying to set up rain to uh, make something happen. Um, and he actually swaps out to preserve this, which makes a lot of sense because it means I can't lock in an earthquake uh, just yet with uh, Diggersby. So he's going to sack this thing, and like I mentioned before, Dragon Claw into Shadow Sneak. It's now in range four. This puts it at about 8%, 9%. I would be stunned if Shadow Sneak did not pick this up. I mean, I know this is a beast, but this is also a Giratina. So Giratina's busted. I, I absolutely love this mon. Um, it is not just one of my favorite mods to use in draft. Um, I Every single Ubers league I've ever participated in, I've used it. But um, it's also one of my favorite designs of any Pokemon at all. I fucking love this thing. Um, but yep, uh, I'm just going to go into my dedicated answer, uh, Guzzlord. I could stay in, but do I want to risk this thing being Scarf and clicking Outrage? Not really. Uh, Guzzlord's guaranteed to live one Dragon-type move. Um, and Fish's Rend Under Rain also does a ridiculous amount of damage. So I'm just going to endure, get my chip off. And what's amazing about Guzzlord doing uh, what it's doing in this game right here, right now, um, getting this chip off against the Strike Fish is it's going to put it in range of any Diggersby attack. And since my Diggersby is Scarf, regardless whether or not the Strike Fish is Scarf or not, um, I will be able to revenge it very, very cleanly. Um, but that damage is 100% like adamant banned. So. Um, I outspeed it either way, the damage against Guzzlord um, on that first initial hit. So I actually could have just stayed in Giratina and Dragon Claw, but I didn't want to risk anything. Um, so now I'm just going to go into my Diggersby here. Body Slam is the safest play here because I going for Earthquake uh, would bring in the Pelipper. I don't want to do that. So Body Slam is the safest option. I'm just taking time here to calc to make sure Body Slam KOs, even if he has like a significant amount of bulk. It still does. It does about over half. Um, but, uh, I, I, I don't really have any other option, you know what I mean? So I could go into Giratina, but I don't think that's the best option. So, um, just going to go into this thing, click body slam. Uh, I think it claims one kill. I mean, Raikou won't live it. Um, Pelipper probably won't live it. Um, well, Raikou could live it as you will see after I KO this thing. 
Um, I get a little bit nervous about <laughs> this Raikou here because since the item hadn't been revealed, I thought, you know, maybe this is uh, maybe this is Shuka Berry. This could be Shuka Berry. And I'm just looking at this damage here. Like the calc says it does like 61% and it's at like 56. I just don't really want to risk it. I'd rather just get in uh, Giratina, get that extra Shadow Sneak chip, and then guarantee it um, just to be 100% sure. He could burn me with Scald, that's fine. All I need is a teeny bit of Shadow Sneak chip. If he swaps out into Dracovish, then I get the chip anyway by the next time this Raikou comes in and rocks. So I feel pretty confident about uh, this being checkmate at this point in the game. Uh, so he just takes the damage, Shadow Ball comes off. So uh, Giratina, I think, gets its first, de first death of the season. Uh, and then Digger's Beach is just going to come right back in and click Body Slam twice. I could have clicked Earthquake, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this thing is... A super Shuka Berry or something. I just click Body Slam just in case. <laughs> uh, maybe it's like Endure, Custab, Magna Rise. I don't know. Um, but no, Body Slam just just pops off. So um, Body Slam will KO the Raikou, and then I'll outspeed the Drakevish and click Body Slam as well because I am Choice Scarf. Uh, and Diggersby is going to clean once again. Uh, last week it picked up those final two kills. This week it's doing the exact same thing believe it is the kill leader at this point um, on my team and second in the league right behind Luxance's uh, me and Xiao Luxance being the only other undefeated person left in the league uh, beside myself so uh, this puts us at 5-0 plus 22 pretty sure this means we clinch playoffs I'd be, I'd be shocked if we didn't um, and uh, yeah that was a great game Lucas once again be sure to go check out his channel and uh, definitely promise that regular content, somewhat regular content, will resume uh, next weekend. I think my game against NCP and uh, OG Albina uh, will be livecom. I'll try and make it livecom. I'm going to be playing it from uh, Chicago, so I won't have my setup, but I'm going to bring my Switch with me. Um, so I'm just going to plug it into my laptop and play like that. So it might be a case where I am livecoming it, but uh, I won't have like a face cam or my layout. Uh, but then uh, the game against Shay should uh, be totally normal. So um, sorry about all of the little uh, kinks here and there, um, but that's what happens when you're traveling a lot. So uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed nonetheless, and I'll see you all later.